Trust me, if you make one block and then you put it all together, you are gonna absolutely be stunned. Hi friends, happy new year. The new year may have started out a bit rocky for this quilter. That flew, not enough to keep me down. To start this new year out right, I'm going to give you this quilt block pattern for free. Enough talking already. Let's get busy learning how to make this one block kaleidoscope quilt pattern. This technique that I'm gonna share with you, it's been called a couple different things. Some people call it stitch and flip. Some people call paper it paper piecing without the paper, using fabric as your base. For the sake of today's video, let's call it some controlled stitch and flip. Let me talk about the base. What is behind this quilt block? You don't really wanna use a really heavy quilting cotton to put as your base for this fabric piece. You want something that's lightweight, but yet still cotton. Now this is where you can go into Joanne Fabrics and they have that whole wall of muslin. And you know, muslin is gonna be perfect for this project. Muslin, the way I know it, Typically you make up a mock-up of clothing in muslin to see how it's gonna fit right and such. It's kind of like throwaway fabric, if you will. It's not really good for quilting, like on the top of a quilt top, so to speak, because it's kind of thin and whatnot. There are a couple choices here when it comes to this fabric backing. What is going to be behind your quilt top when it's done? in between sandwiched, you know, nobody's gonna see that. Wouldn't wanna use like a printed type thin cotton because then you may be able to see through and you don't want So that. what I suggest is going to your local Goodwill, as I do often, as some of you know, always look where the sheets are. And undoubtedly, I always find brand spanking new sheets, flat, fitted, whatever, pillowcases, in the original package but here's the thing they're vintage cotton sheets which is absolutely fabulous in my mind because i've used them as backings on my quilt they're cheap enough i can definitely use them as a fabric base and in today's case right here is an old jc penny's flat cotton sheet that I found in the package still at the Goodwill. And I've been working on it. As you can see, it's kind of cut up and tore up already. I use this for practice mock-ups and different things like that. It's a good way to get away without spending, you know, a lot of money. We must stabilize this with something. The best way that I see to stabilize this piece of muslin is with starch. Right here, good old fashioned spray starch. Typically I do buy the generic dollar store one, but I was at Walmart, so I just, you know, grabbed their faultless brand. Any cheap brand will You don't do. have to buy the best in starch, in my opinion. We're going to end up with a 12 and a half inch block, but you need to starch it first because starch will shrink cotton fabric, no doubt about it. You never want to cut your quilt blocks and then starch them you want to starch them oversized. So typically I would just take a whole thing of muslin and just spray starch the whole thing and press it and then cut. But since I'm showing you one block today, I just rough cut out a piece bigger than what I needed and we are going to spray starch it. Just go over nice and slow and just get everything nice and pressed. We want it to be stiff because we're going to be doing a lot with this. Imagine folding paper and different things like that and you want to keep those creases and you want to keep things nice so they don't shift, right? So that's what we wanna make this like, kind of like paper. So the goal here, make this piece of fabric as stiff as it possibly can be. Now all this starch will come out in the wash too, so there's no worries, it's not gonna like stay in there forever. Now so. a 12 and a half inch clear ruler it's still on my wish list. It does remind me every time I go to look through these yellow lines that I need a ruler in this size that's clear. But anyways, I digress, my friends. <laughs> Take your muslin pieces that you starched and create some 12 and a half inch squared pieces of foundation fabric. To make only one block to make this totally magnificent kaleidoscope pattern in your quilt, 
your muslin square, your darker fabric, your lighter fabric, and your little piece that goes on the corner of some sort of contrasting fabric. That is this piece here and this piece here. Make sure that it is as busy as it can possibly be. Or you could maybe use a solid and get away with it too, but you'd still see a lot of seam work there. I would go with polka dots or just some kind of random busy floral pattern. In this case, for this block, I did use a turquoise with this like little white star toss random pattern. That's gonna hide any seams that are trying to you know, shine through here on my kaleidoscope quilt. The secret to this magnificent kaleidoscope block is the way that we mark up with a pencil on that muslin piece of fabric that we just starched and cut out. The first thing to mark up is each corner. I want you to box out a quarter inch square on each of the corners. Just like that. The reason why I'm using a pencil is because pencil will not heat erase when I go to iron this later when we attach the pieces on. Just keep that in mind. If you make all these marks with a heat erasable pen, you will erase it and you'll be mad. So use a pencil <laughs> or something that, you know, won't erase with heat. Once you have all four corners marked with that little quarter inch square on each one of them, then you're just going to find one of the corners and just put the word top, T-O-P, top. So that way I know which way I'm working. So if this is the top corner right here, then this is going to be the top right, and then this is going to be the top left. So I'm going to literally put that in so you can see what I mean. Top left, top right. We are going to be putting measurements along these two sides, right here. Not over here, over here. This top piece that I indicate, this is where this is going to end up, right here. So I'm saying this is the top, but I don't know what else to call it, so it's the top. And just to give you an idea, since this is the top, these are the measurements down this side, and these are going to be the measurements down that side. The next step is to take the top here and just fold it to the very end here and crease right here with your finger. Open it back up and then where that crease was, go ahead and mark it with your pencil. Now take this top piece. Do you see this side? which would be near the top left right here. You see that? It's not on this side, it's on this side. I want this line right here to kiss this line that I just made. I don't want the edge of the fabric to kiss that line. I want this quarter inch mark away from that corner to kiss that line. So I'm going to lift this up. And you can see here if I fold that back, there's that quarter inch just hanging out in the wind there, and this line is going to kiss that line. Once those two lines are kissing, then you're going to make a crease here. With your fingernail, open it back up, and then make a mark with your pencil. While still looking at it this way, you're then going to look at this line right here, and you want this line to kiss that line in the center of this side. So you'll lift it up, see, hopefully, they are definitely kissing right there. And then once they kiss, you can finger crease that right there. Open it back up and make a line right where that crease was. So we're still looking at the top right here. Now we're going to go over to this side and work on this top right hand side. So the first thing you're gonna do is take this corner and put it all the way down here. Now, you want these two edges of the fabric to meet that first time. Then make your crease with your fingernail, like so, 
open it back up, make a mark on that line that you just creased, take this top line here and make it kiss right there. And then do your fingernail crease right there, open it back up, come along here, you see those are the measurements you're making. Now this end piece, that line right there needs to kiss the middle right here of this piece of fabric. So bring it up and you can see my quarter inch is still, you know, out in the wind there. It's not being added in there. It's being omitted for the time. And then finger crease. Leaving out these quarter inches right now will ensure that we have an overall even block all around. You always want to account for your seam allowances. The next mark to make is a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric on the marks that you made. So you're going to take your ruler and place it so you have a quarter inch in from the edge of your fabric piece. You're going to come along here and all those notches that you made when you made the creases, you're going to find where it is and I can see it sticking out right there. I'm just going to make a tiny straight line right there across where I made that notch. Come over here, do the same, and do the same right there. That ensures me that I am definitely a quarter inch away from the edge. So where it crossed over, that is the center of essentially where I want to start my line when we make our lines. So it's like a little plus, it's right in the dead center. It's really not that complicated. Once you do it, uh, you know, on a couple blocks, you're gonna be golden. So you want to come over here and do the same exact thing to this side. Come in, you're, you know, you're still working with just these side measurements from where we marked top. Find your quarter inch in, and put a little slash there. So if this is the top, then this must be the bottom, correct? <laughs> so I'm just gonna define this a little bit for you. Now when we draw our lines toward this area, and you'll see in a second what I mean by that, this little spot right here where that all intersects right at that corner that is where you are going to aim right there okay we're going to aim right there we're not aiming for the edge of this fabric at all the corner of it we're not we are aiming for this this is very important if you want all your proportions to be correct the first thing we're going to do is take a long ruler we're going to line up this intersection and this intersection down here. Remember this is the bottom and this is the top area. So I am going to make sure my ruler is right on where that intersects and I'm going to come down here and make sure that this right here is where I'm aiming for. Once you have both intersections lined up, then you're going to draw a line to each intersection, just like so. You're going to come over here and you're going to do it to this side too. So those are the first two lines that are drawn. Now you just go down to this line and draw from that intersection down to that point right there. Then you'll do it with this one and then these two. So those are the lines so far. So of course you can see here we have all of our markings but I forgot to give you two very very important other markings. You can see here I went ahead and started sewing and I thought oh my word I didn't tell them. So we need to do this one last mark before we go any further and sew these pieces on. 
So you can see here, I did have to unpick, but no worries. So this is the top, and these are the first two lines that go down. I want you to mark a quarter inch seam allowance to the inside on both of these lines. So I'm putting a quarter inch toward the inside top here. So you can see my line, I'm coming in a quarter inch this way. So I just need the mark down toward the bottom of this block. And so I'm gonna start somewhere up here and I'm just going to, there, mark it, okay? And then I'm gonna come over here to this line right here and I'm going to mark a quarter inch in this way. This will make a ton of sense here in a second. <laughs> can't believe I left that part out. Oy. Okay, so then once that's lined up, I have a quarter inch in and I'm following that line all the way down to the bottom, then I just need to mark it right in this area. Where these two quarter inch lines meet up, there is now an intersection, right? That, my friends, is where you stop sewing. If you continue sewing all the way down through to the end, you're going to mess yourself up and things aren't gonna be right and they're gonna be tight and all that. So you don't wanna do that. You want to stop here where that inside intersection is. Now you don't have to make any other marks besides this last one right here. And this measures from the corner, if I had to measure it, you know, from the edge of the fabric up, you're looking about two and a quarter inches from the bottom corner up is where you want to stop sewing. So we will have to put a pin there or something so we know that we need to stop there. Otherwise, when we go to flip it, to press it, it's gonna be too tight and just things aren't gonna work. Okay, friends, so you have that bottom mark there. Don't forget that, that's very important, that stopping point at the bottom. So now you're looking at it from the top down just for reference this right here is my dark piece i want this in that center spray right here so i want this facing up for now you can pick either side to line the edge of this fabric up with first so just for whatever sake i'm gonna go with this this is the top and this is the top left so with right sides facing up i'm going to line this up with that first mark that I made. Don't line it up with that inside quarter inch seam mark. Mm -mm. The first original line. That's why I didn't have you take it all the way to the end with the line. So you want this edge to line up right with that first mark that you made to the left of the top. While I'm here, I'm going to take a peek here and see where that mark is. So it's right there. So I'm going to pop my pin right there because I know that that is where I need to stop. And I'm gonna put a pin closer up here. And one more here. Now you're gonna grab your light piece of fabric. <laughs> and you're going to line it up along the edge of your dark fabric. Line it up and then you can take your pins out and pin all pieces together. So you'll be pinning three layers together. Okay, so I'm going to hold my finger there just to make sure I know where that end is where I need to stop sewing. And you can see there it's through all three layers. Take this pin out and repin. Take out and repin. The biggest part in this step that you have to remember is you need to make sure that this middle piece right here covers that whole corner right there. Otherwise, you're going to be short. Now, you do have some wiggle room because we are gonna, you know, chop off that bottom corner, but you know, you just want to be mindful of that, that that has to cover. It seems confusing, I know, but it's really not, friends. Trust me, if you make one block and then you put it all together, you are going to absolutely be stunned. To help me out, I'm going to start sewing right where this bottom part is because I want to make sure that I don't want to overshoot that. 
So I'm just gonna, you know, eyeball that and then pull out my needle so that it's out of the way. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm at a quarter inch here. And then I'm gonna start sewing and then I'm gonna go all the way to the end to the top. Now you can go over the fabric at the top, just not the bottom. You can put, you know, a couple back stitches in if you want right there. But I'm just gonna follow a quarter inch all the way down. So this is what you should have so far. And this is the top, just for reference. Two pieces that look like that. Wow, nice, nice, okay. And here's what the back looks like. Now you're gonna take it over to your pressing station. Spread out with your hands that seam, make sure that everything is laying nice and flat, and then you're gonna give it a good hot press. So there's what that looks like. And then if you flip it over, sewn up. So after you press it, you're gonna lay it right side down. Before you go any further, you need to take care of that other side of the middle spray. So we took care of the one side right here. We just sewed that. That's what that looks like after it's all cut and done. Now we need to deal with that side first before we go any further to make sure that we're all good. After that, it's smooth sailing, trust me. <laughs> so I wanna deal with the darker piece. This is still the top right here, and this is the bottom. I'm going to lift this up, and I'm going to find that very next line. So this is that center spray. Here's that next line right here. I want to take that, and I want to fold that on the line all the way down. You can put a little finger crease in there if you like. This right here is why you do not sew all the way down to the bottom because we need this crease to be nice and flush like that. This is the last mark, I promise you. Because I don't want to cut into this right here, I want my fabric, this, to go all the way to the edge. I'm not, I don't wanna just slam my ruler down and just cut it, so I am gonna mark it. This is the only one, the only time where you need to actually mark it. The rest of it, we lay our ruler off a quarter inch and slice. But for this, it's particular because we want that center to be proper. Hopefully that's marking. And this is my heat erasable, so I don't mind about this. And then once I mark that where that line is, then I'm gonna come up because I could just pull this back like so. Put my ruler down and then I'm going to line up my ruler right on that red line that I just made. And then I'm going to slice. Make sure when you go down here, you don't wanna cut into your corner though. So might want to veer off a little bit right there. So it's just something you got to watch for at the end there. This is not sewn there, so you don't want to cut like this piece. You want your corner to stay nice, so be mindful. We're gonna just set this right here because we're gonna use that for the rest of our pieces. So now when I flip this this way, I just want you to take note, just so you know what we did. Because I put that line, now this right here is lined up perfectly right on that initial first line that I made. Not the seam allowance, it's on the first line. Now we're gonna flip it back right side down and we're gonna deal with this end over here, the white end, the light end. You're going to lift up, just like you did before, find that first line, and then you're going to crease it. This is how you're gonna deal with the rest of the sprays. You folded it over, and now you're going to add in a quarter inch. So I am cutting a quarter inch away from that fold I just made. And now here I don't really, there's no corner of the muslin in there, so I'm good. And then I'm just gonna take a slice, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. Like so, and then there's this piece. We're gonna use that, so keep that aside. Flip this back, and this is what you should have. 
Yay! I hope you understand so far what I did. Now we're gonna grab this piece that we just cut off and we are going to add it to the edge of this fabric. So this is the right side and this is the wrong side. So I'm gonna put right sides down. Grab a couple pins. Lift it up to my sewing machine and now I'm gonna sew a quarter inch down there. And, oh, let's see. We need to check though, remember we need to check where that, that mark was. So it's right there, so we need to start sewing right there. Now bear with me though, because I came up with this pattern before Christmas and I've been working on it, so I kind of had to come up with everything on my own. So I'm really trying to give you the, the gem nuggets of all the ins and outs on how to get this perfect for your quilt. For this one, the way it's going in my sewing machine, I'm going to want to start up here. So I just need to remember to stop once I get down there. Yay, I stopped. <laughs> okay, so you're going to lift this one over and you can just finger press this one for right now because before we deal with cutting that one, I'm gonna go ahead and add this one on. Now you can see it does get pretty fast after a minute. So I'm gonna take the edge where I cut that and I'm going to put it right here. And if you have something like the ombre, you can try and line it up, you know, best you can. I chose the ombre because I thought, wow, it, it might look kind of cool, right? Who knows? So I'm lining it up right along that, the fabric this time. So it's lined up right with that because remember, there is an extra quarter inch in there allotment for that seam allowance. Put a pin there. Look down here where my stopping point was. Lift it up and add these to the mix. Now those two pieces can be flipped over and pressed. Make sure your muslin piece is straight behind it. So that's what you have so far. Now we're gonna lay it right side down. You can come over here to either side. Now it doesn't matter, you know, which side you work on next. Find the next line, which is right there. Fold it right on that line. Now you're gonna add your ruler in, you're gonna overhang a quarter inch off of where that line was folded, and then we're gonna cut. Put that back, turn it this way. Do the same thing over here, fold it back where that line is. Lay your ruler down, an overhang of a quarter inch past that fold mark, and then slice it. And set that piece there for the next one. Is it looking good, right? <laughs> totally worth it. Next, take this piece, and let's see where we can add this. I'm just trying to look at where the uh, ombres are. Line it up with the edge of the fabric. Grab a couple pins. Look down here. 
where that end spot is. Pop the pin here. Bring it up to your sewing machine and a quarter inch. Oh shoot, I went past the line. See that? Ah, okay. It's okay though. It's okay though. See, I got excited and then, you know. Okay, it's good enough. So I worked on this side and I'm gonna press that over. And just give it a finger press right now because I'm gonna add this piece in over here. So it's right sides together, matching up your edges all the way. Find your stopping point in here, which I think is right there. And I can start from this end, so I'll just take my pin out. Looking good. Come bring it over to your pressing station and just press out the seam that you just sewed. Make sure that that muslin is nice and flat. Put it face down. Come over to this side here, lift back. Make sure you line it up all the way down. Overhang a quarter inch of your ruler past the fold and cut. When you get to this point, this last piece on this side is adhered but it's not trimmed yet because we want to trim the block all at once. So I don't want to trim it just yet. So what I'm going to do is kind of come away from this muslin a little bit because I still need another white piece over here. So I'm just going to overhang past where the edge is and I'm going to, I'm just going to grab me this white piece. See, so there's still room to trim that. So I'm going to take this piece and make sure it fits. It does. My measurements were pretty good on that, I think. <laughs> Pop a pin up top. You're just lining it up with, you know, the edge of the fabric. And down here, where's that spot where I end is about right here. Okay, that last piece is on, so I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm gonna press it. In this case, this piece is left here. Now you can totally use this on your next block too. So this is left over. Um, the white, there's no leftover, it's just the way it ended up. I mean, you can take, you really can't go down you know, much more unless you cut it into that shape. So I tried to have minimal waste, but we all got scraps. So whatever, right? I mean, we're gonna have them regardless. <laughs> so that is extra. There's the block with everything on it. Now it's time to put it right side down, get your 12 and a half inch ruler and trim. I tend to find the diagonal on my ruler and put it up toward the top corner of this block because that is the very center of the corner of course I mean you know and sometimes when you stitch and flip or you sew things on like this the muslin will tend to shrink up a bit because of the stitching so so lay your ruler down find that diagonal from corner to corner best that you can because we're going to trim it from the back once you have it, go ahead and trim it up. Oh my goodness, so pretty. So just for reference, this is what was left from that block. 
Now it's time to grab your little square. Now I just want you to take note here too that when I made that first cut, I did slice into the bottom of the muslin a little bit here, but this is gonna be gone here in a second. So if you do that, don't worry about it. I mean, you know, it is what it is. You try not to do it, but it's gonna get cut off anyways, thrown in the garbage, so you know. Take your little square and fold it wrong sides together. You know, I could totally see this being someone's show quilt, totally. So you can see there, it has a nice crease and I can see the fold in the crease. And that's very important because we're going to be stitching on that. You're gonna lay this right sides down, right toward the corner of this block. Now, since we didn't stitch all the way down, you know, it might be a little bulky right there, but you can do it. I know you can. <laughs> and then I want you to pop a pin over here and a pin over here. So it doesn't really look like it's lined up, but it honestly is lined up with the muslin behind it and that's what I want. I can cut some of that bulk out of the way, that might help, but I think I'm good. You lay that squarely there, put your two pins in so that that crease mark is right along there. You're going to drop your needle in that ditch and sew straight across. You want to flip this up and then press it really good down. Once that's pressed, lift up the top piece here, open it back up. Now you're going to simply lay this down so that you have an overhang quarter inch going this way because we need to cut all this off because we don't want all that in our quilt, no. So I'm laying my quarter inch right along the seam line there and overhanging this way. And then once I think I have it, I go ahead and slice it. And then when I flip this back over, that's like that. So I'm gonna give this just another press here. So this was all that, you know, that came off the bottom. Just for good measure, we can lay this down and make sure that that corner is proper. Turn it this way. And then just trim off the excess corner. And there's just a tiny bit. And that, my friends, is all there is to it, right? I mean, you can totally do this. You could do a block a day and end up with a bunch of blocks in the end and then just sew them all together and there's your quilt top and you have a beautiful, and I mean stunning beautiful kaleidoscope quilt that only took you one block. Let me show you just how versatile this little block is. This is just four of those 12 and a half inch blocks all pointed toward the center. But when you put 64 of them together, this is what you get, amazing. Let's see what happens when you point three of them toward the center and one of them you point away. And this is four blocks total that you're looking at now, but when we put 64 of those same blocks in that scope together, this is what you get. I mean, stunning. Now let's see what happens when you turn three all pointed to the outer corners and only point one toward the inside. Again, 64 of those blocks, just like that. I mean, it takes on a whole new look. I would love to know in the comments which one of those layouts is your favorite. If you found any value in today's tutorial, please feel free to hit that like button. Now, I never ask for subscribers, but I'm almost at 150,000. I mean, we are almost there. So if you're not a subscriber yet and you feel led to do that, then by all means, hit that subscribe button and push me over 150,000 subs.
that is still so amazing to me that so many of you watch my channel and follow this and make the quilts and you know all the things remember all those things that i talked about in today's tutorial can all be found down in my description box underneath this video until next time on the sewing channel take care